Open your Bibles tonight. To the book of First Timothy. Chapter 3. And I will read verse 14 to 16. First Timothy chapter 3. Verse 14 to 16. And Ephesians chapter 1. Verse 17 to 20. First Timothy. Chapter 3. Three, verse 14 to 16. Hallelujah. If you are there, say yes. These things, right? I unto thee, hoping to come unto thee shortly. But if I turn it long, That thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he had appointed here of all things, by whom also he made the worlds who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. By the grace of God, this evening we'd like to continue on the subject we've been looking at, and the subject title is the revelation of Jesus. Ever say the revelation of Jesus? Say it louder. Say the revelation of Jesus. Shall we bow our heads for prayer, Father? We are so grateful for bringing us together once again at your feet. Thank you for everyone who have made up time to be in your house. And thank you, Lord, for, for every other person who are watching us online, who are also joining us on radio. Thank you for all those ones that have joined on, on the Facebook. Father, we are grateful because you always have something to say to us. The word says you will speak. And the word which thou shalt speak shall come to pass. I pray tonight that your word will come to pass in our lives. Pray that your, the eyes of everyone will be opened to see beyond the veil. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. A loud amen. We've been looking at the subject, the revelation of Jesus. One of the scriptures we've been looking at, that is Ephesians chapter 1, verse 16, down to verse 19, tells us 
that the eyes of our understanding being enlightened, that we may know the hope of his calling, that we may know the hope of his calling. Also, that God will give unto us, verse 17, the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Everybody say the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God. For us to succeed on this earth, we need to have the spirit of revelation in the knowledge of God. He said the eyes of our understanding being enlightened. It is my prayer tonight for every child of God that God will open your eyes of understanding and you will have revelation in the knowledge of God in the name of Jesus. So it's very important for us to know that the more you know the creator of heaven and the earth, the more your life takes a new turn on this earth. One of the things that limited people is lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge limits people. If you don't know God, you will be walking in darkness. The scripture says in Psalm 82 verse 6, he said they know not, they understand not. Uh, verse 5, they know not, they understand not. He said they walk on in darkness. They walk on in darkness. They walk on in darkness. In other words, there is no limit to the darkness that people fail to know God will walk in. Wanted to know that God wants us to have revelation. It is the revelation that changed a church member to a real Christian. The fact that you are in, in church does not mean you are a real Christian. But when you begin to have revelation of God, it moves you from the backside to the front. It makes you, it, it helps you to conduct yourself aright. You don't need preacher around you to conduct yourself. The knowledge of God and the revelation of God that has come into your life, we definitely change you for the better. Everyone who have gotten to know God, they have changed. They have been changed for the better. Second Corinthians Chapter 3, verse 18. He said, we all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord. That's revelation. And we are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. We all with open face. Everybody say, with open face. Beholding as in a mirror. Here is the mirror. The mirror of God's word changes us. So many years ago, before I got this scripture, I've shared it with one or two people. In those days, as a young man, what the, my major prayer is, God, help me to know Christ. I want to know you. So God, in the night vision, gave me a revelation. It was a night vision. I saw a mirror in front of me. But amazing thing, the amazing thing about the mirror was that the mirror was not reflecting me. You know, when you stand before a mirror, mirror should show your image. But that mirror was not showing my image. I was amazed. I have never seen anything like that. Because a mirror is supposed to reflect me. But that mirror did not reflect me at all. The more I became inquisitive to look into the mirror, I just saw that my body is like you are fast forwarding things. Was just changing. Was just changing. Was just changing. <laughs> So the image I was looking at, and the only image that was in the mirror was the image of Jesus. Everybody said the image of Jesus. Eventually, as I began to search the scripture, and I found that scripture, because that's exactly what God wants me to know. He said, we all with open face, beholding as in a mirror or a glass, the glory of the Lord. He said, we are changed. Everybody said, we are changed. The more you have the revelation of Jesus, the more you will change. The more Jesus reveals himself to you, the true Christian you will become. The more you know Jesus, the more your anger will disappear. The more your attitude will change. The reason why there has not been difference between people who have not come to know Jesus and the people who have come to know Jesus, but their attitude still remains the same, is their proximity to Jesus. Proximity to Jesus determines how your life will be. 
the closer you are to him, the change is uh, will be, uh, the closer you are to him, the more change you will have. You will just wake up one day and discover that people get you angry and you, you, you are not just angry. You are changing. Everybody say we are changing. You just discover that those things that used to hold you down, they are no longer holding you down anymore. It's because you're already getting closer to Jesus. The closer you are, the more the light of God will shine upon your life. The Bible says the part of the just, Proverbs 4, 18, is like what? A shining light, which shineth more and more unto the perfect day. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. My prayer for everyone is that the light of God will shine upon your life. As you move closer to Jesus, that thing that looks impossible to you, that will I be able to conquer this habit? Will I be able to conquer this uh, thing in my life? The closer you are, the more the power of that thing holding you will be reduced and will be broken over your life. Can I hear amen from somebody? The scripture says concerning Jesus, it says, for the Son of Man manifested that he might destroy what? The works of the devil. The works of the devil over your life can be destroyed. Everybody say it can be destroyed. But Christ needs to manifest in your life. He has to manifest. When you give Christ his own place in your life, the work of darkness within you will be destroyed. Evil thoughts, evil imagination. All manner of habits, strange habits that have held you down. You just discover that. This Egyptian you used to see, you see them no more. What happened? He broke the power and the chain of darkness over your life. For everyone still struggling with one thing or the other in their life today. I pray as Christ manifests himself to you, may the yoke of darkness be broken over your life. Oh, let me hear a bigger amen for it. I said, may the yoke of darkness be broken over your life. Oh, glory to Jesus. So the revelation of Jesus causes changes in the life of everyone that moves closer to him. You will know that holiness is important when you begin to get closer to him. You don't need pastor or anyone to sit near you to be holy. You will just know that, look, holiness is important to your life. You are not doing anybody a favor to be holy. You are doing yourself a favor. Everybody say a favor. Holiness. You will know it. The more, the closer you are to Jesus, the more you will know that holiness will benefit you here on this earth. Holiness. Bible says without holiness, no man will see the Lord. No man will see the Lord. You want to see the Lord, then you need to walk in holiness. You need to walk in holiness. Privately, in your house, in your place of work, in your room, you will know that holiness is important. Knowing Christ brings lifting. Everybody say lifting. Brings lifting and promotion into, your, into people's life. In Matthew chapter 16 and Matthew chapter 18, Jesus made a statement. He said, when Peter said, Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. At that moment, because of that revelation, Jesus said, I say unto you, you are Peter. And upon this revelation, I will build my church. And the gate of hell will not what? Prevail against it. When you have the revelation of Christ, you are being built up inside. Second Chronicles 20.20 20. Believe the Lord your God, you shall be established. Believe also his prophet. And what will happen? You shall prosper. Your establishment is in knowing Jesus. Tell your neighbor, say your establishment is in knowing Jesus. Nobody will be able to bamboozle you once you have known Jesus. No matter what happens, say, well, I know this God. I know this God. When they ask you, go and search for abolish or for something because of this challenge and circumstance in your life. 
you will say, no, I can never go back to the world. I will never go back to Satan. Because the scripture says, those who turn to another God, their sorrow shall be multiplied. I'm never going to turn to another. Because you know Jesus. Knowing Jesus brings about lifting. When Paul met Jesus, his life changed. His eyes got open on the way to Damascus. In Acts chapter 9, he, he, he got to know him. He met him. The revelation of Jesus came to him. When Jesus said to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? No, Paul was not persecuting Jesus on a direct manner. But he was doing that in an indirect manner. He was walking against the church, walking against the children of God, locking them up, throwing some of them into prison. But when Jesus appeared to him, Jesus told him, you cannot separate me from my church. I am the head of this church. You are persecuting me. And Jesus told him, it is a hard thing for you to kick against the people. That's another revelation. That's why I always warn people who are fighting God. You can never win. You will enjoy yourself. Jesus said to him, it's a hard thing. How many of you know what priests is all about? Those people have gone to the farm before you know priests. Priests. You know, that can choke your leg. Now, God said it is a hard thing for you to be kicking against the priest. Which means, what you are doing will injure you. We injure you. You are eating against the prick. Your leg will be broken, shattered. Things will happen for you. That is why Church of God is the most dangerous uh, organization, entity to be fought against. Nobody fought against the church and win. They will just destroy themselves. No kingdom fought against the church and win. Hallelujah to Jesus. You see that you begin to discover that their kingdom will just crumble. How many empires have crumbled? Why? Because they are working against the church. Roman Empire, crumbled. Babylonian Empire, crumbled. You can count so many empires. Persia, they crumbled. Now we have another empire. Once anybody is working against the church, you are on your way down. Tell your neighbor, say, it is a hard thing for you to kick against the pricks. When somebody fights against God, they can never win. So when they begin to fight against you and you are with God, they can't win. How many of you know they can't win over your life? They can't win. No power of darkness can win because of your revelation of Jesus that you are not alone in this world. When somebody feels that because you're a Christian, they begin to work against you at the long run they will begin to fail. I have met people before who, was, who were fighting against me. And today when I look at them, I pity them. Why? Because fighting against me is fighting against my maker that I know. And you can't win. And I see their condition, I just pity them. I pity them because of what God is, is allowing to, to work in their life. So it's very important for us to know Jesus. That revelation will make you to be strong, to be confident in the face of challenges of life. So it's good for us to know him. Everybody say, I will know him. You know, Paul, one of the prayers of Paul in Philippians is that, that I may know him. That should be in Philippians chapter 3 verse 10. He said that I may what? Know. This should be our prayer. That I may know him and the power of his what? Resurrection. And the fellowship of his suffering. Be made conformable unto his death. Paul prayed this prayer. It was a dangerous prayer. But he prayed it. He said my desire, greater desire is to know him. Knowing God makes a wonderful person out of you. Makes a godly person out of your life. Everyone say that I may know him. Say it louder. Say that I may know him. 
after they're telling you things about Jesus, first thing that we said is that Jesus is the son of the living God. And being a son of God, he has attributes of God in himself. Whatever you see in the Father, you see in the Son. In fact, I've never seen anybody saying that the Father revealed himself to, to them. It's only that I saw Jesus. Are you listening to me? Because when you see Jesus, you have seen the Father. Jesus has made it clear. I personally believe that when we get to heaven, the person we will see is still Jesus. Everybody say Jesus. That's the person we will see because he is God. Everybody say the son of the living God. In John 14, Jesus said to Philip, those who have seen me have seen who? The father. He said, where are you? What are you saying? Show us the father. He said, don't you know that the father is in me and I am in the father? So you cannot differentiate the father from the son. The Bible says in Hebrews that we read, Jesus is the image of the invisible God. The express image. Everybody say express image. Not that once you have seen the express image, you don't need to look for the, for the person. You have seen the person. Once you have seen me, he said, you have seen the Father. So Jesus, being God and the Son of God, he has the attributes of God. Number one, attribute is that he is omnipresent. Tell your neighbor, say omnipresent. And I've discussed this with you. Also is, number two, omniscience. Everybody say omniscience. Which means that he knows all things. You don't need to tell God about yourself. He knows, he knows you. That's why he said to Jeremiah, before you are formed in your mother's womb, I knew thee. Before you know yourself, God already knows you because he formed you. Tell your neighbor, say God knows you. He knows you, you don't need to tell him. He knows you, he knows what you are doing, he knows where you are going, he knows your end even from the beginning. You don't know your end, but he knows. So many years ago, I was praying, asking God for his purpose for my life. And God showed me 10 years before, 10 years after that time, that was 1990, January the 16th. I can still remember vividly. God showed me things that will happen 10 years after that period. And I saw it. Now, why did God show me? Because he already knows everything about your future. Can somebody tell your neighbor, say, God knows everything about your future. When he showed me, I was, I was one day, I, I, I got up, I said, wow. So, my life will change. <laughs> Hallelujah to Jesus. So, God will change my life for the better. And after that time, exactly the way he said it, after that 10 years. I pray today, as you have the knowledge of God, may he reveal some things to you about your life. Because he knows everything. He is omniscient. There is nothing he does not know. And we need to know him to be like that. Jesus did not need to ask you about your name, about your plans. He already knows. Tell your neighbor, say, he knows everything about you. In John, John chapter 2, we read a portion of John chapter 2, verse 24 to 25. This was Jesus. But Jesus did not commit himself unto them. You know, while he was here as a human being, they didn't recognize him. The Bible says in John 1, 12, uh, 1, 1, 10, he came to his own people. His own people received him not but as many. Everybody say, as many. Because God came in the flesh, they could not recognize him. These are the people that have been reading Pentateuch. They have been reading all but, but because he came in the flesh, he covered himself with the flesh. 
they could no longer recognize he. So, while he was in the flesh, he just looked like any of us. But the difference is that he's God. He just covered himself with flesh. Like I'll be telling us, as time permits me today. But Jesus did not commit himself unto them. Because he knew what? He knew some men. He knew all men. He knows everyone. All men on the earth. Now for you to know about 8 billion people. Is it 8 billion or not? On the earth. Now that is not a joke. Because he is God. He knows all men. Tell your neighbor, say he knows you. And verse 25 says, And neither know that any should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. I like God. That's to let you know that when you see Jesus walking with you, don't look at him as if he's your mate. That was the mistake they made in the days while he was walking on the earth. They look at him as if he was their mate. They look at him as if he's just like any, any of us. You see some scriptures that they were asking him. How did you know? Ah, you are just, you are not up to 50 years old and you know Abraham. Ah, ah, how can you say that? They were looking at him as, as ordinary human beings. They have not, for, they have forgotten that he was just putting on flesh. The God they have been asking for to see, to know, decided to camouflage in flesh, in the flesh. And when he came, they still did not know him. Because they expected him to come as a king, riding on, on a horse or something, or somebody that will deliver them from Romans empire. But he came as a gentleman. Are you listening to me? But when he came, they could not recognize him. May you recognize Jesus beyond the physical. You know, our problem today is because many believers still don't know him. That's why we're looking at this scripture. God want me to, at least in a little way, expose some things to you so that you begin to see him beyond, you see your mate, your father, your mother, your uncle. You begin to see him the way he is in a true form. Now today, by the grace of God, within the minutes that I have, another attribute of God that is so important to us that you and I need to take note of is that he is omnipotent. Ever say omnipotent. When we say somebody is an omnipotent, Jesus is omnipotent. We means someone who possesses all power. Ever say all power. Anything you know as power on this earth, he possesses it. He possesses power. Any power you think of, he possesses it. If you are thinking of electric power, he possesses it. He is the first light that ever existed. Are you listening to me? The Bible said God is what? Light. And in him, there is no darkness. Before the conception of this electric power, his own power has been reigning. When God said, let there be light, verse 3 of Genesis is calling himself out. He was not calling this light or the light of the sun and moon. It, it was the first light and he called himself out to manifest. May the Lord manifest in your life. I said, may the light of God manifest in your life. That is why when Jesus came, the scripture says concerning him in John 1, 4, he said, in him was what? Light. And the light is what? The light of man. In him was life. And the life was what? The light of man. Jesus himself said, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. Those who walk with me 
who follow me will never walk in darkness, but they will have the light of life. I pray for everyone. May the light of life shine in your life. It is that light that reveals Jesus to us. When you read the Bible, it makes I mean, you will just discover some revelation, some new meaning. That is the light of God. It's a light in our heart that is shining out. And I pray that that light will shine more and more in your life. Everybody say, he possesses all power. All powers. Whatever the power you think of, he possess every one of them. In Matthew 28, verse 18, after Jesus' resurrection, he made a profound statement for us to know that there is no power that, that can be compared unto him. And Jesus came and spoke unto them, say, all. Ever say, all. If it is some power, he will have said, some power belong to me. For he said it in a profound manner. All power. Can somebody say, all power? Say, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. All power. All power. Now, what? Why is this so important to you? Why is this so important to me as a child of God? If my father has all power, should I be afraid of one person with just one power? Are you listening to me? If one person with one power is raising his leg and is doing incantation against you, should you be afraid of one person with one power? When your father has what? All power. And the power of God reside on inside of you. Everybody say, the power of God is on the inside of me. It's inside of me. If Jesus is in you, then all those power. That's why a man with one power cannot conquer a man with many powers. Can somebody, did you get what I've just said? So don't be afraid of witches, of wizards, of abalis, of one person somewhere. Because some people that have been in Lagos, they have never visited their village, even if they have something to do. They, they will always say, ah, there are some witches there. Maybe because of some old, old women that are there. Who told you that they are witches? They could be, or some could be, but should you be afraid of them? No. Because you have the Father on this side of you. Jesus is on this side of you. He said, all power is given unto me in heaven, on the heart and underneath the heart. First John 4, 4. God's word says you are of God. Everybody say, I belong to God. He said, little children. You are of God, little children. And you have what? Overcome. Everybody say, I have overcome. Say it louder. Say, I am an overcomer already. Jesus did not use the language you will overcome. You will overcome means you are still yet to overcome you already. The fact that you have not seen the manifestation of overcoming in the physical does not negate the fact that you have overcome. Everybody say, I have overcome. The sickness in your life, what have you done? Overcome them. Childlessness, you have, you have done what? Overcome them. Failure, you have what? Over. Poverty, you have what? You have overcome. And the reason why the Bible says you have overcome is written there. He said, because. Everybody say, because. Greater. Everybody say, greater. Is he that is in you than he that is where? In the world. Who is in the world? Satan and his host. God said you have overcome them. Because the person you have received, Jesus you have received, the Holy God that you have received is their inside of you. And 
Jesus has all power. Everybody say all power. When I first gave my life to Christ, God usually showed me some things. To show me that I'm no longer that old person. I'm no longer. I will see somebody want to attack me in the dream, but I've just discovered that the attack did not just work. So I was, I would wake up and say, eh? and I just gave my life to Christ. God was showing me that you are now more powerful. You are now in a new kingdom. No weapon formed or fashion against you will prosper. Every tongue that will rise against you in judgment, I will condemn. So he was showing me all those things. Why was he showing me? So that I can gain confidence. So that I will not follow him with fear. You know some people, they follow, but they will shake. There are so many Christians. They are following Christ, so, but they are still afraid. Tell your neighbor, say, don't be afraid. The person you are following is powerful. He is power. Everybody say powerful. He is omnipotent. Everybody say omnipotent. And you need to know it. You need to know it and put your trust in the omnipotence of God. One of the omnipotence power of God is that he is creative in power. Everybody say he has creative power. When somebody has a creative power, it means he can bring something into being from nothing. From nothing. You know, you and I, you want to make juice. You make juice from orange, orange or from pineapple. But God can make something out of where? Nothing. That is why I know. If what you are asking for is not available, God can still make some things out for you. We need to know Jesus because he did some creative things in the Bible. In John chapter 2, they needed wine in the wedding ceremony. And when we say wine, don't begin to think it's an alcoholic. It's not an alcoholic wine. But he produced wine. They needed wine. And then he asked them, go and fetch water and put it in the pot. I mean, they know how the wine is being produced from great fruits or some other thing. But he decided to make wine out of nothing. They go and fetch water. And those servants went and fetch water. Everybody say creative. They fetch water and before they start fetching water, Mary, the mother of Jesus, said to them, whatsoever he tells you to do, what should you do? Just do it. Do it. Don't argue with him. You know, many of us have not really received miracle because we argue too much. He put some things in your heart, but you started arguing in your heart. Go and do this thing. It does not make sense to you. There are certain things God will ask you to do that will not make sense. He will ask you, go and do something. It won't make sense to you. But if you can work on that, quote and unquote, the wisdom of God that suggested that. Because you see, the Bible says the foolishness of God is wiser than what? Than the wisdom of men. If you know him to be an omnipotent, he can make things happen. For you, again they run of me. And I pray as you know Jesus, as you get familiar with Him, may miracle be the order of the day in your life. May wonders be the order of the day in your life. May you have a great, a great testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. He will ask you to do some things that does not make sense. He asks them. Go and fetch water. Thank God for those servants. You will never hear them talk. That was their story and their story ended there. But we are still talking about their story. When you want to know people who are obedient, you find them in John chapter 2. They are the servants, the waiters at the wedding ceremony in Cana of Galilee. 
When I went to Israel 2014, they took us to Cana of Galilee. We saw the place. And one thing that is so significant there is that they make wine. They took us to a place where they are selling plenty of wine. Not like Nigeria. Home. That one is different. The one they made in Israel. Praise the Lord. So it's a wine community. It doesn't make sense when he told them, go and fetch water. And after fetching water, those servants, you will not hear them talk. Throughout the Bible, they are the people that never spoke, but they spoke through their obedience. There is a way your obedience can speak to God. There is a way your obedience can speak to God. That is why act your obedience out, even without voice. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. They go and fetch water. And they went, fetch water. They came back and said, it is done. The only word they spoke was, it is done. And Jesus said, okay, take the water. Go and give it to the master of ceremony, the governor of the feast. They obeyed. They didn't say, well, it's why they, they needed. They were not afraid of the person they would deliver the message to. You know, Yoruba used to say, is the person that sends you on errand that you should be afraid of, not the person you will deliver the message to. So, they went, took the water, which they did not even know whether it has been turned to wine or not. It wasn't their concern. The master said, take and go and give it to the governor of the feast. And they went. And they gave it to the governor of the feast. The governor tasted it. He said, wow. Wow. The governor made the statement. said, every man at the beginning of the feast always served the best one. After people are drunk and they are okay, he now gives them the one that is not very good. He said, but you have kept the best wine up to now. Look at your neighbor and say, with the omnipotent power of God, your best is still in your future. That's the way it works. As a child of God, you must believe in the omnipotent power of God and obey whatever He tells you. Because whatever He will tell you may not make sense at times. It may not make sense. But once you know the way He speaks, and is the one that spoke to you, and you just obey it, you will see wonders in your life. Everybody say wonders. Look at your neighbor, say, are you expecting wonders? Then you must know Jesus as an omnipotent God. Everybody say, you must know Jesus as omnipotent. Omnipotent. Having all power. Don't leave areas of your life aloof thinking that God cannot do anything about this. No matter whatever, just hand over your life. Do unto me what cement right. Work in my life. Work in my marriage. Work in my business. Work on my brain. Work on my senses. Work on my internal organ. Let your power be real in, in my life. You will see over time in your life, you will see terrific changes that you have never even believed that can ever happen. When you know God, the Bible said the governor of the feast did not know where this sweet wine came out from. But nobody told him that it was water that turned to wine. He did not know. He was a logizing that came, wow, where did you keep this one? The best wine is kept now. Wow. When the feast is almost over, so which means people will the party has just started. Praise the Lord. Because when the, when the new wine comes, party have just started. People that want to go before, they will sit down. Let us sit to the end of this matter. Praise the Lord. I see a great future ahead of you. Nobody gives his life to Christ and remain in Christ and obey the instruction of God and ever remain the same. God said, and my people shall never be put to shame. You read it in the Bible? Joel 2.26. 
27. He said, you will eat in plenty. And the word of God has no barrier of seasons. The season now is that things are expensive, but God's word remains the same because of the omnipotent power of God. God said, you and your family, you will eat what? In plenty. Everybody said, there will not be scarcity around my life. The question is, like a man said it in the Bible, said, how shall this thing be? And if God will open the windows of heaven, my distance, he negates, he was comparing God to man who is limited. Never in your life compare God to ordinary men. Don't compare God to ordinary men. Say if God will open the windows of heaven, and the prophet Elisha said, because you have uttered this out, you will see it, but you will not taste that of it. He was a brutal prophet. He was a prophet that does not give you to it. He said, you doubted the power of God. Never doubt God's power in your life. Just leave God in his own class. He's not in the class of any man. He's not in the class of the president of a nation, or president of America, or whichever the president. He's never in their class. So don't compare God to man. God resides in omnipotence power. Anywhere you see God, you see omnipotence power at its disposal. No wonder he said, in Isaiah chapter 40, Isaiah 40, 28. As thou not know, as thou not heard, that the everlasting God, ever say everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the heart, fainted not. He does not know what it means to lack power. You and I can be weak. We can be weary. But his omnipotence remains the same consistently for eternity. He does not know what it means for one's power to reduce. The Bible says he does not faint. He doesn't even know what fainting is. The only fainting that he knows is what man always discuss with him. The youth can faint. For God, he said he's an everlasting God. Everlasting God. He said the Lord, the creator of the hands of the heart, fainted not. Neither is he weary. He does not grow weary. You and I, by the time you drive home, you will sit down and blow some fan on yourself or AC. Why? Because you have been weary and tired of driving. In an old dog. For God does not know what weariness is all about. He said, I am the Lord. Malachi chapter 3 verse 5. 6. I change it not. Look at your neighbor. Say, this omnipotence power of Jesus runs to eternity. His omnipotence power. He said, he fainted not. Neither does he weary. We there is no searching of what? His understanding. Verse 29, he now give her power to who? You and I. And to them that have no might, what does he do? He increase their strength. Tonight, for some of us who lack some power, receive power in Jesus' name. For some of us who lack some strength, may the Lord increase your strength in Jesus' name. We deal with a God who is omnipotent in power. When your battery runs weak, you plug it to the source of electricity. When your spiritual power, you are, you are fainting, your prayer life is no longer in shape, your passion for God and God's house is diminishing, you struggle now to come to church. Like some people, for a long time, they struggle to come to church. Yeah, you see, there's a way you can know whether your power is diminishing. When the things of God, the passion for his house is diminishing, 
you, are, you have to struggle. And some people, they have even, the fire is almost dead. Because they are not, they don't even come at all anymore. They don't know that something is dying on inside of them. But if anything is dying, your passion is dying, plug it. Ever say plug it. Some people, they don't want their phone to die at all. They go about with plug. If Christian can do like that, you go about with what can get you power. You go about with the word. You go about with praying the spirit. Building up yourself on your most holy faith. Praying where? In the Holy Ghost. Jude 20. You go around. If in the physical, you don't want your phone to die, how do you now want your phone, your spiritual power to die in the spirit? Some people's spiritual power is dying and they don't care. They are doing nothing about it. Where they will be ignited, they will not come. And you wonder, in the physical, their phone never die because they want to watch Facebook, Instagram. They are glue on that. But their spiritual life, which is most important, is dying. And they have never plugged into the omnipotence in order to charge their, their life. To charge them. Coming to church is not just a time of just worship. It's a time to charge. Everybody said to charge. That's a time to charge your spiritual life. To charge your energy. Reading Bible is not a fun thing. It is a time to charge yourself. You don't want your laptop to die in the physical. Your phone to die in the physical. How much more? How much importance is your spirit man? And we have a God that is called what? Omnipotent. His power never reduces. His power never reduces. So when you plug in yourself, you become charged up. You go with confidence. You go with confidence. The devil wants to do mess up with you. He will know that he can't just mess up with you. But not every Christian can boast that Satan cannot mess up with them. Because they are not charged up. Look at your neighbor. Say, get charged up. Get charged up. Get charged up. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, say, we have a God who is omnipotent in power. It's an omnipotent God. He possesses all power. We can trust him. We can rely on him. Endlessly, eternity, eternally, we have a God who never diminishes in power. There are some president of nation; their power has diminished. But you see, this God remain powerful eternally. Ever say eternally? Now that makes you and I different from ordinary ordinary religious person or any other religion, because. The honor of our life, the honor of our soul, his power is omnipotent and never reduces. The way he has been self-existent as powerful as he, he has been and he will remain like that eternally. Is that person not good enough, wonderful enough to just rely? Everybody say rely upon. That's why when you are a child of God, be confident about it. Don't let people say, and you say you know, let them see Christ on the inside of you. Rely on it, on him. Trust absolutely. Proverbs 4 or 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with what? All. Why is God saying that? It's because he's omnipotent. He's omnipotent in power. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge it. It will direct your path. Everybody say, I believe in the omnipotence power of God. Don't compare yourself with them. Uh, after all, we are serving the same God. We are not. My own God is what? Omnipotent. Everybody say, omnipotent. It's a different kind of God. It's not a God that you cannot call when there's an emergency. 
You know, some girls are only good when they know that they are. They are at it. But my own, when emergency call, and say in the name of Jesus, things happen. Because you believe the omnipotence of God. He can do anything. He can solve any problem. He can break any chain. Ever say he can break any chain. He can destroy any habit in your life. So people, you have struggled and struggled against one habit or the other. Tell your neighbor, say relax. Trust in the omnipotence of God. I have seen people, if if anybody ever told you that they have been hooked on cocaine, hooked on marijuana before, you wonder. Now they are minister of the gospel. You will never even ask them, have you ever been hooked before? They were hooked to a point of but Jesus set them free. Everybody say he set them free. He made a new person out of them. I decree over your life May new person be made out of your life. May glorious person be made out of your life. What you cannot do for yourself, may the Lord do it for you. Through his omnipotent power, in the name of Jesus. We are saying that Jesus is omnipotent in power. There is nothing he cannot do. There is nothing he cannot achieve. He has creative power. He can make something out of nothing. Creation is possible only with God. He has power to make it happen. One of the power that God has is creative power. John 1, 1 to 3. In the beginning was the word the world was with God and the world was God. The same was in the beginning with God and all things were what? Made by him. He made the world with his omnipotence power. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was light and the light was the light of men. Now, this is the description of Jesus in the scripture. He is the word. The Bible says he is the word of God. Ever said the word of God. And that word is creative in power. It's creative in power. So he has creative power. Apart from the fact that he has creative power, he also has power to help. Tell your neighbor, say, God has power to help. How many of you need God's help? I need it every day. In 2 Chronicles 25 verse 8, 2 Chronicles 25 verse 8, one of the things said there is that God had power to help and to cast down. If somebody is too proud, too arrogant, God does not just have power to help, he has power to cast down. He possesses all this power. This power is within himself. Power to help. For people who are humble enough to ask him for it. How many of us will ask God for help? There's no area of your life that he can... Look, you have done all you can do. The time has come to rely on his power. Rely on his power. Rely. It is when you rely on God's power that God's power makes things happen. I've seen couples who are asking God, God, give me the fruit of the womb. They have done everything they are asked to do and nothing happened. The day they rely, they just rest in God. That's when God manifested. Tell your neighbor, say, not by mind, not by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. Have a a uh, couple in this church so many years ago. The woman went to ask her, oh, go on. after eight years of marriage, nothing seems to happen. Oh, go and do this, go and do that. I remember a day, she just walked from the VI where she went for the IVF 
to my office in anger. You know, when they cannot see God, they see God's servant. At least, the anger they want to vent on God, they vent it on, on God's servant. So, as a servant of God, you are always ready to receive whatever. Come out that. When man fails, God can never fail. Man can fail. IVF has failed many times. But this God, failure is not in his dictionary. I can't sell her. Pray for her. I say, trust God. After she has trusted him, both of them trusted him. Without any IV, anything. Zim. I've given this testimony before. My children went. Uh, in this primary school that time, it primary or secondary? I think it was primary school. I was driving to the office when the husband was calling me, Pastor, around 7 30. Pastor, Pastor, Pastor. And the husband happened to be a medical, if a medical personnel. You see, look, they always believe that look, doctors can help, but God does what? Does the do? That is the Christian among them. Pastor, I had to pack and listen. What happened to you? It has happened. It has happened. Somebody will call me very soon. That it has happened. I said it has happened. I said it has happened. I had that good news. I was glad for him. I was happy. I rejoice in the spirit. And in the physical. Before they left the, the shore of this country, they have two wonderful children. Those children should be about six, seven now, whatever. Why? When man fails, God can never fail. Don't put God in the category of men. He is omnipotent. Everybody say he's omnipotent. And there is nothing that he cannot do. There is nothing. If he has not, if his time has not come, his time may not have come. But when his time comes, no matter what they say you have, block two, uh, this, you have this one, you have that one. When God's time comes, he suspends all those laws and make his will to come to pass. A law will be suspended for somebody here. I said before the end of this month, before the end of this year, a Lord shall be suspended for you in order for you to move forward in the mighty name of Jesus. Everybody say omnipotent. And in the Bible, God has suspended the law of gravity for many people. He's just suspended it. Enoch through the omnipotent power of God, the Bible recorded concerning Enoch that Enoch did not see death because he pleased God. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 1, is it verse 4 or 5? The Bible says Enoch pleased God and he was not, for God took him. Everybody say, God took him. God just said, Go, Alagba. Come either. He just took him. I believe every man in his days, they will look for the mountains, to the heat, to look for him. He has just disappeared, not knowing that it was God who said, and God took him because he pleased God. Everybody say he pleased God. By faith, he not was translated. You see, God can, do, let me tell you, he can do anything. I mean, even in the Old Testament, you see his omnipotent power. He just made a decision. It wasn't Enoch that made the decision. God just made a decision. Enoch, would you please meet the man Bawambi? And Enoch just disappeared. And that was it. They looked for him. How I know that they looked for him was when Elijah too disappeared, what did they do? They were looking for him. Is that not so? All the other people said to Elijah, your master, let us... They went to mountain. They went everywhere looking for Elijah. They couldn't find him. So in the days here too, he not just disappeared. God took him. I believe
if they will look around, where is he? Where is he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Bible says he had this testimony before his translation. He was translated faith by faith. Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. And God said, for without faith, which means the faith of Enoch made God to be happy with him. Probably he believed God. I know you can do it. I don't want to die. I just want to come to heaven. And God took him. There is nothing God cannot do. Tell your neighbor, say, there is nothing God cannot do. Say, he has power to help you. That's what the Bible says. He has power to help you. One of the powers that God has is the power to help. That's why you should not shy away from God. Help me. Help me. Ever say, God, help me. Say it louder. Say, God, help me. Say it louder. Say, God, help me. Say it three times. Say, God, help me. We are dealing with omnipotent. He has so many powers. Anything you call power is within the disposal of God. So when you need help, the area where you cannot help yourself, do not shy away from getting help from him. Do not shy away from saying, God, help me. Isaiah 41, verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen thee. I believe somebody needs this scripture tonight. May the Lord strengthen you. Yea, I will help thee. I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. I will uphold you with the right hand. Of my righteousness. I will uphold. Everybody say uphold. Many people used to think that it's their power that is keeping them in faith. No. The Bible says we are kept by the power of God. Until the day of redemption. The reason why we have not fallen into the temptations. And falling under the power of Satan. Is because God is keeping us in shape. Upholding us. By the word of his power. The Bible says he uphold all things. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. He uphold all things by the word of his power. Listen to me. God has power to help. And because his omnipotence as a child of God, rely on his power to help you out. In any area of your life where you need help. So somebody you get angry at you. Too much. Your anger has resorted to what Yoruba called abuku. You know when somebody's anger is beyond normal. At a time, people say, what is even wrong with you? It means your anger has crossed a band. That's crossed a band. And you, you have been put to shame as a result of this. God help me. God help me. Help me. In my, help me to deal with this thing. Some people, you talk too much. Your own duty is that whatever you need to say, you say. Those ones you do not to say, you have put yourself in problem by talking. You know God helped David. David prayed a prayer. Is this Psalm 142? He said, put, put a what? A watch upon my what? He needed help in that area. And many of us need help in very many areas of our lives. Say, Lord, put a watch upon my tongue so that it's only what is necessary that I will say. Not what I will say and people will put me in trouble. Praise the Lord. May the Lord use his power to set watch over your heart, over your lips, 
in the name of Jesus. Some people, there are cases that they don't mind their business. They go all about. And when they go about like that, they create problems for themselves. When you leave a place, probably somebody stole something and you are not the one. They say you are the one that just passed through this place. You put yourself in problem. There are certain places you should not go. Don't mind your business. At times, the Bible says, mind your own business. He says, study to be what? Quiet. And mind your... <laughs> he says, study to... You see, to be quiet. God says, study to... He's not part of us, but you have to study to... To be quiet. Mind your own business. Lie as a child of God. That does not mean you should not talk to people visit people, relate with people, but don't let it be too much. There yeah, this man of God so many years ago in the city of Lagos. That man of God is in Ohio now, U.S. Every time, you know, in a way of showing love to church members, he will have visited and visited and visited and visited. By the time he will visit the last person, it's already in the night, maybe around 8 p.m. or he was just doing his work, visiting until somebody began to lock the door. Say, Otunde. day. Nah. They lock the door. Tell pastor, I'm not at home. I hear the answer. He was just doing his own thing. But you see, when it's becoming too much, there's a way wisdom should guide you on things to do. At times, reality brings honor. And respect. When people see you too much, they feel that you are their mate. You become cheap. So when you hide, no wonder God always hides himself. Oh yes. People will turn him to his, their mate. Even the Lord that came, haven't they turned him to their mate? God, you see, he hid himself. In the light which no man can accomplish. So in life, you need to understand the power of God. He has power to help. Ever say power to help. And anyone who makes a demand, Lord, help me, he will rise and help you. I say, My father will rise and help you. You need to know Jesus. I'm going to close right now. In Jeremiah 32, 7, 27, it said, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? He's asking you. Your answer depends on your revelation of God. He says, Is there anything too hard for me? If you think one problem you have is too hard for him, that's what you get. It's not that it's too hard for him, but you did not believe that there's no problem that is too hard for him. Verse 19 of the same chapter says, verse 19, he has answered himself in verse 19. He said, God is great in cancer, mighty in work, for thy eyes are open unto all the ways of the sons of men, to give everyone according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. There is nothing too hard for him. Ever say there is nothing too hard for God. So you need to get to that point in your revelation of God. Don't put a lead on God. Jesus, Son of God, I believe in you. Yes, I believe in you. I believe in you. Place your right hand on your chest. And say after me, say, Dear God in heaven, I come to you today in the name of Jesus, the Son of God, who came to this world, who died for me on the cross of Calvary. Today, Lord, I believe in him who died for me, who was buried and he resurrected on the third day 
for my justification. And so, Lord, I surrender my life to you today. I ask that the blood is shed on the cross of Calvary will wash my heart free of sin, free of unrighteousness. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul today. I am not a child of God because my sins have forgiven me. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, take over these lives. Take over these lives. Take over these lives. Walk in them, walk upon them. Change them from inside out. Inside out. Encounter, let them have that genuine encounter with the Lord that will convince them forever of what Jesus has done for them. Blessed be your holy name. Let the power of the Holy Ghost envelop them and their life will never remain the same. They will serve you all their lives. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray.